Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nirsh Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Tester Certification. Now oh, we are still in chapter one and we are looking at the second topic of it which is aspects of agile approaches. And uh, here we have the very first topic to be understood as uh, agile software development approaches. Now when you talk about the agile development approaches, generally we have a lot of approaches which can be considered as a part of uh, the agile development process and of course uh, we have several ways to implement it but in this syllabus uh, this particular certification program we are only talking about three of them which are commonly practiced uh, across the organizations like extreme programming scrum and kanban where generally when you talk about stream programming it is a uh, uh, very rarely practiced because it involves a lot of time on the development part and a scrum is something which is commonly practiced today very widely uh, you know exercised within the organizations across the world and kanban is another which has a different benefit altogether of using such approach so it, it's also possible that your organization may be using a combined approach of these three but let's have a look from what we have got in the syllabus the very first thing is stream programming where we talk about extreme programming as of course uh, giving value to the uh, script uh, development part where the customer collaboration is there and we spend a lot of time compared to testing on development and generally uh, try to minimize as many defects as possible in the development phase itself and generally as we have a good collaboration of the customers or developers sit together to discuss on what exactly can be really built which is as per the requirement then we call such approach as extreme programming but of course it was having certain drawbacks like having enough time spent on development not at all on the quality term so we have less time for testing which would be difficult to manage with the entire process so uh, all we need to understand from this syllabus from the certification point of view is the uh, certain aspects which are mentioned below here like uh, what XP uh, values are in terms of uh, guiding development process like communication, simplicity, feedback, courage and respect. Communications talks about internal communication, simplicity making your job simple, feedback which is consistent and frequent, courage to do something new and respect about the work. Also, XP describes a set of principles as uh, additional guidelines added to these inputs. We have certain things like humanity, economics, mutual benefit, self-similarity, improvement, diversity, reflection, flow, opportunity, redundancy, failure, quality, baby steps, and accepted responsibilities. So I think these words are very common and easy to understand if in case you have any query about any of these terms you can just comment below and I'll be there to give you explanation on that but this word seems to be very simple when it comes to agile development which will be easy to understand baby steps generally means that a small increments in every iteration okay and accepted responsibility means people are self-oriented of course to deal with it now also XP describes 13 primary practices which generally uh, implemented within the extreme programming approach of agile like sit together whole team, informative workspace, energized work, pair programming, stories, weekly cycle, quarterly cycle, slack, 10 minute build, continuous integration, test first programming and incremental design, which are again some of the practices which is generally practiced as a part of extreme programming. Again, in case you have any of these words clarity issues, please feel free to comment below because I don't want to make the tutorial a longer one which would be boring and not understanding at all. The major share lies in Scrum, which is quite commonly practiced across the globe today within the Agile development process. This is the approach which is well established and very well commonly used. So here are some of the terms which we need to understand at this point of time and we'll be elaborating it like sprint. It is generally each cycle in each iteration of Scrum is known as a sprint, which we call it as a sprint because it is very fast, very quick, which is generally for two to four weeks. But internally within organization, it might be only conducted for two weeks. But as per STQB, they say that it can be within two to four weeks. Product increment. Of course, every single cycle, you add something new. Every single iteration, you add something new as you iterate to the existing. So that's why we call Agile as iterative incremental. Product backlog is something which generally manages what kind of task do you really have to be created as a part of the entire project. 
Now product backlog will include all the parent requirements which are supposed to be uh, processed in terms of sprints. Where generally internally each sprint will also have a backlog <clears throat> which generally means the task which you will be considering in a particular sprint. So product backlog is for the overall project whereas sprint uh, is for each iteration in Scrum. Also, we have certain things like definition of done, which will be created on the basis of acceptance criteria determined by the client. Now, as per the requirement shared with you from the customer, uh, they will be identifying certain acceptance criteria, which will be determined in terms of definition of done. That if you can meet this acceptance criteria, I will call it as it is the task is completed. So the task could be maybe a requirement processing. You are developing it, testing it, once the acceptance criteria is met, it is called as done. So generally in uh, Agile, exit criteria can also be called as definition of done. If a product meets, if a task meets exit criteria, you call it as definition done. Time boxing, it means that it comes with a time limit, which will be predetermined that how long we will take for each cycle or each sprint to be conducting it. So generally when you say defining a sprint, we determine the number of hours required to do the same job and we call it as <coughs> time boxing. Where time boxing means that you allocate, you schedule, you define the time frame which is required to do those set of activities. And transparency which is like keeping it open and uh, discussable within the team including the scrum master as well. Where generally we call it as daily scrums or you also know it as stand up meetings where you discuss internally within the team that what is that we have done so far and what is that we'll be looking ahead to do today and how we can help each other to build a better cohesion within the team members. And generally we keep it open, transparency in the sense also we say that we make use of boards which can be used as a common medium to reflect what is the progress on the sprint. When you talk further, uh, we uh, Scrum generally have three roles like Scrum Master, Product Owner and Development Team. These are the three major roles of Scrum approach, where Scrum Master is generally your project manager from the traditional approaches. So if traditional approach you call it as project manager, here you call it as Scrum Master. But uh, Scrum Master will not be directly uh, involved in the process, but indirectly will be attending or addressing the uh, role uh, of uh, the stand-up meetings and answering the queries of the team members. Whereas product owner is someone which is called as business analyst in traditional approaches, person who will be internal or maybe external, who will be taking the responsibilities of uh, gathering the requirements, representing the customer internally, and then uh, showcasing what exactly the requirement all about and filling in the gaps, loopholes, and flaws within the process to tell you what is the requirement all about. Whereas development team is the group of members who are working together to make the product. So um, be it tester, developer, anyone put together in one team is called as development team as a part of Agile. And we also know it like previous tutorial, we understood about whole team approach. And of course, that is what the development team is all about. The third approach is Kanban, where Kanban is again a unique entity, where is another approach of Agile which can be used. But Kanban came with all unique entities like uh, Kanban board, work in progress limit, and lead time where Kanban board said that uh, we must have a board showcasing the monitoring process on the activities going on and generally let each member have their concentration on the board and see that how the progress is going on so that they can understand what is next to be done and they can come there and just move the task from uh, undone or maybe to do to the in progress. So generally it includes a board with four columns that is to do, in progress, verify and done. So uh, the task will generally move from first column to the last column and uh, will be transparent in terms of uh, the team members where all the team members could see this board and generally decide who will be taking care of what responsibility. And here generally nobody gives you the input on the directions, but people are self-oriented so that it can be uh, open for them to take up what job is next to be done. Work in progress limit generally says that we keep strictness on the parallel ongoing activities where we say that we generally have certain number of tasks which can be done or executed at the same time. So it's just not that like if we have four members and we are doing uh, eight tasks at the same time, you can determine the limit of it. 
saying that okay we will take only five tasks at a time and then we will no matter you have four members or five members working on it so generally we determine the work in progress limit which is done simultaneously lead time of course it is about uh, the time between the uh, what work you have started like you should uh, to used to optimize the continuous flow of task by minimizing the average lead time for the complete value stream so where when you work with between one task to another task how much time we generally take as an average so which is what we consider here which would be really important to determine that how much lead time do we have to complete a task and between two different tasks from the start to the end so kanban has an uh, again a unique entity all about but generally if you see we are talking about scrum which is commonly practiced and we will be elaborating that in more detail so uh, just the team i'm not feeling well i have a heavy voice of course uh, because i have a cold but uh, i never wanted to skip a session here for you so that i've just created a tutorial in case i go down further maybe uh, you may not ex expect a tutorial from me for a few days and then i'll be back with uh, schedule again so till then if you have any queries feel free to comment below i will be always available to answer your queries and uh, Maybe you can look forward to explore that more and uh, let me know if you have anything else to be discussed. So thanks for watching the video team. Happy learning.